Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use the iNaturalist app. And you can see it on the left, it's the one with the green bird, and it says iNaturalist under it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the app. And when you first open it, you see a screen that looks something like this. But the very first thing you need to do is actually sign into your iNaturalist account. So on the bottom right hand side, you're going to click on the person that says settings. And then you're going to sign in up at the top of the screen. I'm already signed in. Um, so the next step that we want to do is to make sure that you have already signed up for the two projects that we're going to be using in this class. So down at the bottom in the center, I'm going to choose projects. And what you want to see here are the Carmont High School Biology Project and the San Mateo County Bio Blitz. If you have not already joined these two projects, make sure you do that. The way that you would do that on your phone or mobile device is by going to either featured or nearby. And um, you could always pull down and type in a search up at the top here if you don't see it listed in the nearby um, searches. Once you have joined the projects, then you're going to move over to observations, which is the bottom icon on the left. Right now I don't have any observations on my iPhone. And the way that you would add observations when you're out in the field is you would press add on the blue button up on the top right hand side of the screen. And here, right now, you can see that it's automatically pulling my location. It automatically has the time, the information that we need. Um, wherever you are, it will get that information. So the way that you would take a picture is up on the top right hand side, you'll see that there's a camera. If I click on the camera, I can choose to either take a photo, which if I'm outside and I see something, I'd probably just take a photo straight from there. I actually um, am inside my classroom right now and can't take a photo of something outside, but I was actually outside yesterday. So I'm going to choose, um, choose from library and I'm going to get a picture that I took yesterday. Okay, when I chose the picture from my camera roll that I had already taken, it asked me to import the metadata. And the metadata is basically the time and date stamp that's associated with this picture. It also includes the location of the observation, the GPS. And so I'm going to say yes for this. Now, um, this was a plant that I took a picture of. It was um, on the back side of C Hall, in between B and C Hall there, um, next to the walkway. It was a big piece of grassy, um, a big piece of grass with multiple blades that came up, but then hanging from them were these seed pods. All right. After I have put in my picture, taken a picture, now I need to describe what I saw. And I'm going to fill out the species name. And I know that this is some sort of a grass, but I don't know what kind. So there's two options here. One is I can click on the magnifying glass and I can look through and I know that it's a plant. If all I know is it's a plant, I can just press add. But if I think that it's a, I want to kind of go further, I can click on plant and kind of look through, but I don't know which of these different scientific names grass would be. So I'm actually going to go up to the search bar up at the top and I'm just going to type in grass. And um, here it says grasses and their allies, grasses, etc. I'm going to go ahead and choose grasses. And then again, I'm looking and I'm like, I don't know any of these scientific names. So I'm going to, um, ooh, but I see one that says rattlesnake glass, grass, and it actually kind of looks like mine. So I'm going to click on that and look at it. And there's all these little pictures here. And this looks sort of close, but it um, looks dried out. Let's look at some of the others. They all kind of have the similar kind of shape of the little seed pods, but I don't know which one it is. But I think it might be a rattlesnake grass. I'm not going to choose any of these three. I'm actually going to go back one and click add here because I, I don't know how specific I need to be here. So I'm just going to um, say that it's rattlesnake grass. And I can um, add some notes here and I can say that it was between B and C hall. Okay, the location, um, it will automatically do for you, the time, etc. But in the more, need ID help. I need help. I don't know if I was right in my identification, and I probably could get it even um, closer to the actual species. So I'm going to say that I need ID help. 
And then um, geo privacy. What this means is like if you're at your own house, you probably want to change the geo privacy and make it private. You don't want people to know where you live. But if you're at a park or at school, you can go ahead and leave that as open. And then um, for projects, this is where we're going to um, link this sighting, this observation to our projects. So I'm going to add it to both of the projects here, the Carmont High School Bio Project and the San Mateo County Bio Blitz and press done. And here are some other fields that now need to be filled in. So I notice, I wonder, and this reminds me of. These are fields that I want you to fill out when you're making your observations. You can add the habitat if you're in open grassland or an oaks, um, oak woodland, something like that. If you know the habitat, that's information that might help. But for today, I'm just going to fill out the I notice. So I'm going to say I notice um, each blade of grass had um, a seed pod or something at the end. So the I notice is actually going to be your observations. Then you need to fill out I wonder. So here this might be a question or something that you're curious about about this particular species. So I wonder um, if the, um, the rattles actually make noise like a rattlesnake might. And this is something that if I was still with the plant, I could actually listen and see. I wouldn't pick up the plant or pick the plant. Um, you want to leave the species as you find them. But you can always touch them to make closer observations. Just don't pick them. And then the next one is this reminds me. And this is where I want you to make the connection to what we're currently studying. So right now during evolution, we're talking about adaptations. And I'm wondering if the um, rattles are kind of an adaptation to maybe protect the plant from predators from eating the plant. Because um, I know many animals are afraid of like a rattle. Um, rattlesnakes obviously um, are dangerous and so animals want to stay away from them. And some other snakes such as a garter snake, they actually pretend that they're rattling their tail. Um, they move it back and forth within like the brush or leaves to scare away potential predators. So um, I'm wondering if or I'm thinking that this kind of the rattles, it kind of makes me think about adaptations and what these adaptations might be for the plant. So um, this reminds me of um, of um, an adaptation for survival uh, might be that the rattles protect the plant from predators. Okay, and then I have the place for notes. I've chosen my project, so everything's filled out. So I'm going to go ahead and press done. And then you need to make sure that you save. So I can look at everything, but I'm going to press save. And this is going to save my observation. Now, um, if you look down at the bottom left of your screen here, it has a little one in the red um, circle. And that's because it's saved on your phone, but it has not yet synced with iNaturalist online. So when you're outside and maybe you don't have cell service on the iPad, what you want to do is when you come inside, make sure that you sync your observation. Um, so down at the bottom in blue, it's a sync one observation, one photo. That's going to allow me to sync. So once I press that, it's going to sync my observation. Everything's going to be online. And it's going to take a minute. Um, you want to make sure that you have linked your sighting to your project. If you forgot to connect it to the Carlmont High School Biology Project, this is something that you could always do later. Um, you can go back in and you can edit it. You can add the projects and press save and resync it. You can also do this on a computer using the internet. So this is how you are going to collect your observations. So now we're ready to go outside and start our observations.